Hey, welcome everyone to our morning worship and prayer. We are continuing, continuing on in our series on miracles in the, in the, in the Bible. And we are still in this uh, um, scripture in uh, Second Kings. And we're now talking about uh, the last time we met, we talked about the running, uh, the runaway prophet. This time we're going to talk about the skinhead prophet. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll go through that as we dive into the passage of the scripture. We're, there are only three verses though. Let me read it before we come and worship the Lord this morning. And it says in, in 2 Kings chapter 2, 23 to 25, He, Elisha, went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. And he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two she-bears came out of the woods and tore 42 of the boys. And from there, he went on to Mount Carmel. And from there, he returned to Samaria. Let's talk about this and see God's overall plan for his purpose on this earth. Magnifying this seemingly unimportant, un a detached story as far as God's grand story is concerned. But hey, why don't we just come together and worship the Lord for He is a sovereign God and He knows what He's doing. And let's give Him, give up all the, give him all the glory and the honor and the praise this morning as we come.
What an amazing time to worship together. Today, we're going to be focusing on a on few of the miracles that the prophet Elisha had performed. And we have just seen the power of him cleansing the water supply in Jericho. What an amazing, uh, miraculous act that he performed. But I'd like us to know that this has something to do with him replacing the man who had made history in, 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 in Israel. I mean, this man is so amazing that all his miracles and the thing that he had done is incomparable to whatever miracles that he had done before. His life was so amazing that the way he exited here from earth is through a chariot of fire. Totally amazing. And in, in light of all this, here's a man who's supposed to inherit that legendary position of ministry. His name is Elisha. But God's purpose and God's plan for Israel is so huge that it's not because a person had already gone and passed away. It doesn't mean his work has to stop. In other words, what I'm saying is there had been such a mentoring that had happened between the two that when it's time for him to leave, uh, to leave this earth, he has given him the double portion. By the way, double portion has something to do with like an, like an old or older son in the family who will be receiving double portion of inheritance simply because he'll be the one in charge of the uh, burial of his parents. So he's supposed to really have that double portion. But the word double portion was also given to Elisha. Now, now, in light of that, I'd like us to know that the signs and wonders that Elisha had done, um, and like cleansing the water supply of Jericho, has something to do with the legitimacy of him being the next prophet for the people of God. And once again, this is... Uh, uh, here's a, a three-part, um, three part, th there are three parts in this three-verse uh, story I'd like to share with us today. And it's something to do with him encountering some of the young people in, 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 in a place where he has passed uh, through and, he is in, in, and it is in, in battle. And so out from this, we learn... And we will really affirm that truly Elisha is the legitimate uh, person who is supposed to be the next prophetic uh, person in Israel. So having said that, the first, uh, the first uh, part of this scenario uh, that I'd like us to see is this uneventful, uneventful uh, scenario I'd like to look at today. Uneventful because it's not that much of a uh, exciting uh, event. He was just walking by, and then some of the kids came out. Kids, but it says here, let me read this passage of a scripture, verse 23. He went out from there, Jericho, to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, go up, you bald head, bald head, go up. Now we see here some small boys. The scripture, the word boys, is a very uh, general, broad term being used here in this passage of the scripture. I don't want you to think of the kids' church, where some of these kids are, have gone out and started, you know, just trying to uh, mock the prophet. No. 
in fact, the scripture has mentioned um, the word uh, boys or boy or young, young man was, was used uh, to even um, to Joseph, that he was a young Hebrew, according to Genesis 24, verse 12. But he was, you know how his actual age during that time when Joseph was about to interpret the dreams of these uh, prisoners? He was 39 years old. He's, he's far off from being a little boy. Um, we also have uh, uh, Absalom. Absalom was called adult. Uh, but he was called young, but he was actually an adult already. Solomon, when he asked for God's wisdom, for wisdom from above, in order to lead God's people, he wasn't really a kid like a 12-year-old. He wasn't. He was 20 years old. Now imagine with me, when Elisha was walking along the road, and, and these men came out. I don't know about you, but in my generation, there's this uh, music video by Michael Jackson called Beat It. If you remember, these gong, gang people coming out, trying to attack and trying to fight. Uh, these two gangs coming in and, and fight against each other. You can imagine this picture of Elisha being met by these men or boys, as we may say it from this text. Well, after experiencing that, then there was an unexpected, out, out from this uneventful scenario came an, an unexpected curse. Yes. Verse 40, uh, 24, late, uh, first part of 24, it says, And he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them. He cursed them. Not just out of anger. But he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Yes, you heard me. He cursed them in the name of the Lord. Now it's, but while reading this, I remember the promise Abraham received from the Lord in Genesis chapter 12 when the Lord says, I'll bless those who will bless you and curse those who will curse you. This is one of them. He cursed these young men and... And he cursed them in the Lord. Uh, what, uh, what a scenario that he, I was wondering, why did he do that? I believe it has something to do, not because he was really bald, bald. We, can, we, you know, we can't really say he was skinhead or a, a bald person, though they say bald head. Could it be that Elisha, Elijah was a hairy prophet? while he's not that hairy. And so he called them, they called, uh, they called him a bald head. Or should he be, uh, uh, as a young man, there are people who get bald when they're still in their 20s. And so it is possible that he was really a bald person. But nevertheless, the jeering of these young men was put into question because when they did that, remember they said, go up, oh bald man, go up. You know why they said, go up is because these people themselves saw and heard about the report of Elijah being taken by the chariots of fire. When they saw and heard that news and they knew he was one of the, one of the men, mentee, then, he, then they kind of told him, oh, you go up too, you bald man. Go up, go up like your mentor. It was such a mocking uh, situation that Elisha knew that this is more than just my skinhead. They're mocking my ministry. They are mocking the ministry of Elijah, therefore mocking God's call in people's lives. Now that is heavy. The next time that, so the next time you start saying something about the work of God, think again. Because this is not about just those people. It's about the hand of God. Well, guess what happened? He not only cursed in the name of the Lord, there's this that happened, the unbelievable miracle that happened. What happened here? Verse 24, later part. Two she-bears came out of the woods and tore 42 of the boys. Now we realize 
some boys in, in the uh, uh, verse before this, but here they were counted as 42. No wonder why you needed two female bears to tear, to put a stop to this violence. 42 of them. Not kid church. 42 young men. By the way, the word young men speaks of those people who are qualified to go to battle. Yeah, so these are not kids' kids. These are, these could be battle ready. These are gang, almost like a gang member, a gang group, uh, gang men in that, in that little town. And so having said that, now we realize, wow, this is, this is, but I, I want you to look at the word tor or tear. It is not, or split. The, the Bible did not mention that the 42 boys were killed. They were tore. That means mauled uh, ma by the other uh, translation. But in other words, it, could it be that the group was spread out when this, these two female bears came out? They all ran away. Could it be that that, that thing happened? So it, the scripture wasn't clear whether they were killed or they just ran away. It just said that they were tored or they, uh, they were, it was, there, there was such a disruption when these two female bears came out. I, 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 I remember when I was, uh, I was in, in, in the university, uh, when I was a young man, I was involved in a fraternity. And I remember my master keeping me when there was a, a gang, uh, a fraternity war in my university. My master kept me as a young plebe or a young member of that fraternity. And he didn't allow me to be part of that uh, war. I remember that. Uh, I remember vividly. He, he tucked me in and, and, and got me out and, uh, got, and, and was able to escape. I remember um, 29 years ago, June 24, around uh, beyond midnight, uh, on my way home, as soon as I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I got baptized, I got saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. On my way home, there were two drunk men who tried to stop me. But something happened. A voice of a, of a woman from the background, it was dark in San Paolo. I was walking. I was so happy. I came to know Christ. I was going to my dorm, little dorm that I was renting with my sister. On my way home, there were these two guys who tried to stop me. I knew they were drunk the way they, they, they walk. And they were about to approach me. But suddenly, a voice from the background came out and says, Hey, don't touch him. He's my nephew. <laughs> so they stopped. You know, I, 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 I should show you my tita. My, she's just a small uh, teacher, a high, uh, high school teacher who spoke, and those two guys stopped. Well, could it be that Elisha was spared and he was able to escape? because of these 42 men who were trying to stop God's work, and yet the Lord showed up and put a stop to it. What am I saying here? What I'm saying is, it's not because a person had already stopped in ministry. It doesn't mean God's work will also be stopped. God is concerned with leadership succession, and He want to make sure that the work of God will continue on, even if a legendary Elisha had already passed. God would want to make sure that the next person is not only uh, qualified, but legitimized as the next heir or successor in order for the ministry of God for the Israelites to continue on. I want us to think about that this morning. In our leadership, in our ministry, in the ministry we're part of, that this is not just about a one person doing the job, but it's about God uh, moving into in and through us into the next generation of leaders. I like, I like this quote from John Stott. He says, we're all in a lifetime of ministry. That's a, that's a noble a quote, a lifetime of ministry. But it's even more nobler. If, our, if after our lifetime, there are another amazing team of leaders who will continue on with the job God has started. I want to end with this. God ensures an interrupted leadership succession in ministry through great commission and miraculous intervention because this is His work. I want us to come before God and praise Him this morning once again. With
Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together this morning and be reminded of God's plan for our lives on this earth. And what an amazing time to worship God together, study His Word together, and pray together. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us together, reminding us even of the Great Commission, that this ministry and these blessings and these miracles that we're experiencing today is not just for us to enjoy, but to make sure that the next generation of leaders and next generation of people in the church and in your kingdom will bring this work to the next level, Lord. We're looking forward for the kingdom of God increasing in its volume, in its influence, and in its power all throughout the earth and all throughout generations to come. We're grateful that we're part in this generation. May we do our part in this generation, in magnifying your name and advancing your kingdom. Let the next generation of leaders do the same or even better. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.